Hey guys, welcome back to one more demo where we are going to explore an end to end extract transform load job using an online real time data set. So, uh, in this demonstration, we are going to use a uh, data set, it's a small data set which is uh, part of datahub.io. They have uh, open sourced this data set and we can download it for free and we can use it for demonstration and commercial use. So this is a uh, data set which is of uh, only 66 KB which is which consists of data that comprise information about glaciers. So it mainly have three fields the year, mean, cumulative mass balance, number of observations for the glacier. So the description for this uh, fields is provided as well here. So this is a small and clean data set which have like uh, values from 1945 to 2014 so we will perform a simple ETL job on this data set we will get this data onto our Databricks notebook and we will perform ETL and we will break this data set into two starting from 1945 to 2000 into one data set and 2000 to 2014 into another data set and we'll uh, name them accordingly and put it back put them back in our uh, DBFS uh, storage or you can move it to any other storage if you wish to so let's get right into it and see how we can do that so yeah this is the URL that we just came from so I'm gonna import the necessary dependencies that we want in order to make this uh, ATL work properly so first step we are doing is we are actually getting the link of this CSV file so we have a link for this CSV file that will redirect so I'm going to get this link address and I'm going to just simply do a get request to this link and I will read this get as a stream I'll not read this as uh, JSON or text which the request library returns as I want this uh, URL to be returned as a stream of data and I'm gonna read it into a, a variable R and I'm going to open a simple file which we'll call glaciers.csv and we are going to write the bytes that we get from the stream and yeah we will iterate over this stream and we'll get a chunk of 8 MB data every time we'll iterate over it and we will write it to a file which we are referencing here which will be our glaciers.csv so this is a simple operation that I have wrapped into a function here which actually does the same thing it just accepts the URL if we call the get data function and pass the URL to it it will do the job for us and we don't have to manually specify the name of that file like how we are passing glaciers.csv here it will take the name of the file from the url directly by splitting the url into uh, many parts based on the slashes and it will take the last element from that array that the split returns and the last element will be the name of the file and the rest of the operation is same which we performed in the command 3 so let's just run these things and see how they're working so if I'm called I'm about to call this it completed but we will not see the data because the data is in the Databricks file system uh, this is also the same thing that is doing the same operation so just in order to get the file name this function will return the file name for us and we'll place that file name in a variable called file name so let me run this function which is wrapped into it Oh, I haven't called the function from command 4 okay we have that now let me call this function and it should uh, place the value in a file name so let's see if we get the file name okay if I am to print file name it should give us the file name yeah the file name is glaciers.csv which we got it from this and the state is also saved in the get data we have the data in the databricks file system so yeah let's read that file from the file system I have basically just placed it in the dbfs so if I will just call this function dbfs then it should read the data from the databricks file system and should return a data frame for us yeah it's loading the data and we have the data frame with our three fields so yeah from the file name we can get the file format in order for us to read the data if there are other formats this is just an extra wrapper function that I created just for my convenience 
if you want you guys can do the same and you just have to pass the file name that you want to read from your uh, file system and it will read irrespective of the format it is in it will dynamically pick the format based on the file names extension and it will pass it to the respective data frame or read function and it will get you the file into a data frame variable <coughs> this is again totally optional which i created for my convenience and if we are to call this function it will again do the same operation for us it will load the data into a data frame let's display this data frame and see what the data contains here we have 70 rows in this data frame and uh, they are starting from 1945 till 2014 so now our uh, main ETL job is to split this data frame into two based on the year like before 2000 and after 2000 so for that let me create a temporary view so that I can perform some SQL operations on top of this data frame. And let's see if we can call the SQL operations on this data frame. Yeah, select is working for this. All right, so uh, let's see then. Yeah, I'm going to create two temporary views just to keep the data in memory. And I'm just going to read the data frame where the values are having like if it, the date is starting from 19 I'm gonna put it in a different view and if it is starting from 20 I'm gonna put it in a different view for the 90 I'll call it 90s and the recent one I'll call it as a modern so let's call this and it should load us the data it said okay then I think the data is in the temporary views so let's try reading the data out of it yeah we got the data into this two data frames 90s df and modern df again i have wrapped all these four functions into one function which i named it as transform data and we just have to pass the data frame which we want to transform like this data frame if you pass it to this function it will do the transformation for us and returns two data frames 90s data frame and modern data frame instead of doing all the manual step in different cells we can just do it in one click and single run so if I am to run this function, I should have two variables X and Y with uh, 90s data frame in X and modern data frame in Y variables. Let's display modern data frame. We have everything from 2000 till 2014. And let's display X. This should have only 90s data. So it's starting from 1945 till 1999 because 2000 is in the other data frame <coughs> and these are just optional so yeah we have our data frame splitted we can simply write these data frames to our uh, file system and we can get the job done but i just want to do an extra step like i want to name this data frames based on the data that we have like my 90s data frame should say that it is starting from 1945 till 1999 and the modern data frame should say that it is starting from 2000 to 2014 so the file name should be 2000 hyphen 2014 dot whatever the format and 1994 hyphen 1999 so dot the extension i want the names to be like that so let's see how we can do that so in order for us to get the value of the first and the last row we can simply do an SQL operation on top of it. We can simply do an union using the select all from the first data frame. We can order the data frame by ascending order so that we'll have the minimum value at the top and the maximum value at the bottom. And I'm just going to limit to one so that we can have only the first value when we are doing ascending. And when we are doing descending, it will have the last element at the top and we can fetch that element using limit one. So the same uh, logic applies to both the data frames and we'll get two data frames which have only two values in that data frame. If I'm to display this data frame, it should have only two rows. Yeah, it have 1945 and 1999 which is the first and last row. And the modern one should also have the same.
yeah we have two rows only of 2000 and 2014 so we can simply do a collect on top of this uh, data frame which will give us the rows like we get the data in rows and we can simply use the get item value to get the year from that row and we can append it with the string concatenation by adding an hyphen in between and add the first value and the last value to the start and the end of that uh, variable name so yeah like here we can see that the name of the file is created we have the name as 2000 to 2014 the same will be applied to 90s data frame as well so i have wrapped all the functions into an uh, all the operations into one function which creates the file names of our end result so like it will do the union of the ascending and descending data frames and it will get two values out of it it will perform collect on both the data frames and it will get the item by the column name year and it will append an hyphen to the string and it will give us the names so if i am to call this we should see both the names one for 90s and one for 2000 modern data let's print those variables and yeah we have 1945 to 1999 and 2000 to 2014 these will be our file names and we can write it to whatever file format we want i'm just gonna write it to parquet and i'm going to place the file again back in the dbfs yeah this file says it already exists so yeah this uh, let's leave this so I have created one more function again for my convenience which is a write df which will take the file type which is nothing but the file extension that you want I am passing it parquet here and the data frames we have x and y data frame which we created earlier so our function have created two data frames right transform function created two data frames one from 1990s and after 2000 we have y data frame so those will be two data frames that we are passing here and we'll pass the file names the m and n file names will be the file names that we'll pass to this function and it will write to dbfs easily i think again the file names already exist and the function might throw the same error yeah the file name already exists so if we are to list the files we should see the files in there we have 1945 to 1999.parquet and 2000 to 2014.parking so yeah that's it guys i think this was informative for you and maybe you learned uh, one or two things that you didn't know earlier or this might help you with your current uh, task that you have at hand hope this will be uh, enabling you to be a better data engineer thanks for watching till the end and uh, have a nice day please do subscribe if you like the video thank you